Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Armourer's Bench. Today we're going to take a look at another Browning prototype. This is a lever action, but it has a box magazine. So, we're going to take a look at this in close up, and we're going to try and find out just how this magazine works, and then we'll discuss the history behind the gun. The prototype is based around the vertically sliding locking block, patented by Browning in May 1884, and first used by Winchester in the model 1886. The rifle itself is in a military musket configuration, with full length handguards, military sights, a cleaning rod, and the ability to mount a bayonet. The rifle is chambered in a 45 caliber cartridge, likely 4570, and weighs just over 9 pounds. Browning patented the design for the rifle and magazine in August 1891, with the patent being granted in December, and is attributed to John Moses Browning and his younger brother, Matthew. Okay, let's have a look at the star of the show, Browning's detachable box magazine. The magazine is held in place by a spring-loaded catch at the front of the magazine well, which locks against a tab in the front wall of the magazine. As we look inside the magazine well, we can just about see the lip of the cartridge lifter. Browning's magazine differs significantly from those of James Paris Lee who have been developing single stack detachable magazines since the mid 1870s. It's a simple design with a follower power by a coil spring. The prototype mag itself is made from pressed metal and is held together by some rough welds. Unlike the magazines we're familiar with today, the top of Browning's magazine is enclosed with only a small opening at the rear. The rounds will be loaded nose first with their rims sliding into the channel at the rear of the mag. The single stack magazine appears to hold five rounds and Browning's patent supports this. The position of the magazine in front of the action and not below it is a hint at how it worked. And Browning's patent drawings give us a look inside the magazine. So how did the magazine and action work? A shoulder on the underside of the bolt caught the rim of the cartridge which was protruding from the magazine. The bolt pulled the cartridge backwards out of the magazine and onto a cartridge lifter. As the lever reached its full forward travel, the lifter then elevated the round up into line with the breech. When the lever was cycled back again, the round was pushed off the lifter and chambered, just as in a normal tube-fed Winchester. As the lever reached the end of its return travel, the locking block rose and locked the action. An almost fully enclosed magazine does have its advantages. It would have prevented dirt from entering the mag, and it also overcame the need for feed lips, which were susceptible to damage and one of the elements which took Lee some time to perfect. The prototype has a sliding safety bar that locks the lever and blocks the trigger. Here we get a good look at the locking block descending. And the breech block moving to the rear. And we can just see the striker assembly at the rear of the bolt. Let's take a look inside the action. We can see the cartridge lifter and the firing pin on the face of the bolt. It's always fascinating to see the tool marks on these early tool room prototypes, especially a Browning prototype. From the side we can see the locking block channels in the rear of the bolt and the other side of the striker assembly. The trigger is pivoted and we can see a long slender trigger finger, which when the action is closed extends up to the sear. From the top we can see the cutouts in the bolt for the locking piece and at the front of the bolt we can see the extractor just on the right side of the receiver. It's quite an exposed action with the entire top of the action open. With the action partially closed we can see the pivot point of the extractor and here's an overhead shot of the action closing. The rifle's striker appears to cock on closing and the locking block rising as the bolt goes into battery. It's clear from the design of the magazine that Browning didn't intend the rifle to be reloaded with stripper clips, although single loading would have been possible. Instead, Browning intended the magazine itself to be replaced each time. His patent explains this, saying, One magazine may be readily removed from the gun 
and another introduced in its place, so that the person using the arm may have at hand several magazines to be interchanged as the cartridges from one magazine are exhausted. This is a concept that wouldn't be accepted by the world's militaries for decades. Winchester purchased the rights to the design, but this was one of many designs from Browning which the company never put into production. All in all, a very interesting design, and one of Browning's lesser known concepts. This rifle is a unique prototype, and it was a true honour to examine it. It's now on display at the newly refurbished Cody Firearms Museum at the Buffalo Bills Centre of the West in Cody, Wyoming. The new museum is phenomenal, and well worth a visit. A big thank you to Ashley and Danny for letting me film items like this one from the museum's collection. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can also support the channel via Patreon. The link to that is in the description box below, and we have some cool new perks. Thanks again for watching, see you in the next one.